Good afternoon to all those uh, attending this session. Uh, next, we are going to present a uh, work that we have been developing for some time on digital transformation in the health sector in Chile. My name is Juan Venegas, and I am currently a professor at the San Sebastian University for continuing education and postgraduate programs. But uh, I have also worked in the other public and private university. Um, Anastasia Rebolledo is a last year student in industrial civil engineer and, and is currently uh, working on his thesis on uh, machine learning models for the forecast of medical supply at the Valdivia Base Hospital. Um, today, we are going to show part of the process that has been working with public data in the health area, but um, specifically in the development of a dashboard that allows managing some of the most relevant matrix and that we believe can be a tool for process of digital transformation in health institutions. And in this context, we are going to talk broadly about the health system in Chile, digital transformation, and because the use of R and libraries such as Chinese is also relevant for the development of this type of tool. And then about the, the development process carried out for this type of tools together with dashboard as a task. Um, well, in Chile, the health sector is quite diversified largely uh, due to Chile's geography, but also due to the types of providers. This implies that the public sector covers about 78% of the population, and the private sector 60, 16%. However, many times uh, the public sector is not capable of responding to the demand of patients for various reasons, which tends to create ties with the private sector. In this context, the health sector is completely regulated for the MINSAL or Ministerio de Salud, but in turn, there are other regulators such as Ceremis, eh, Institutos de Seguridad Social, um, Superintendencia de Salud. However, we will talk about, uh, specifically about the Magallanes Hospital, which cover about 85% uh, of the population of this region. Uh, it should be noted that this hospital is located in the southernmost region of Chile, Therefore, the management of information to respond to the demand of patients is critical. Since any patient who could not be treated in this hospital must be redirected to another hospital of the high complexity, which are located at the important distance. Uh, so, currently in Chile, uh, there are many industries that are implementing process and tools for digital transformation, part, partly because the COVID-19 pandemic allowed the entry of new tools, but also because specifically in the health sector is it necessary due to the various problems that exist, such, such as reduction of the waiting list, lag or bad programming or the purchase of supply, low transparency of information or relevant, or relevant matrix for the patient. This has allowed the actor of the system to seek solutions to improve this process, which is not easy task due to the complexity of the system both in its infrastructure and the needs of the patient. Um, along with above, in many public hospitals, most uh, administrative staff are professionals, such as doctors, uh, midwives, among others. Therefore, they need tools that help um, them visualize 
understand and better manage patient information, waiting times, resource, and financials. So uh, regarding R and the shiny framework, uh, we generally use it for its universality for app development, and in addition to being an open source software. But this framework has also been positioned as a development language by many companies such as Absilon, Analithium Solution, Agrospace in Chile, uh, among others. So uh, next, Anastasia, we will show you how much of the development has been. So now I'm going to talk about the approach you should take when designing your solution, which is design thinking. I think most of you have already at least heard of the design thinking um, concept, and it's because it's the best way of understanding the user needs and creating innovative solutions. And by following the steps of design thinking, we can develop user-centered and effective app uh, for visualizing data. The first step is exercise where we begin by truly understanding the needs and goals of our users. Then in the defense, define stage, we move on to defining the specific problem we aim to solve. Defining the problem helps us stay focused and ensures we address the most critical issues. And then in, in the ideate stage, this is where we let our creativity flow. We generate a wide range of ideas for apps design and functionality, and we encourage brainstorming sessions to explore both practical and innovative approaches. The goal is to consider various possibilities that align with the needs of our, our users. Then prototyping allows us to visualize and test different design concepts. And by creating tangible representations of our ideas, we can gather early feedback from users and iterate on our design before investing significant development resources. And the testing stage is crucial um, to ensure our app meets the needs of, uh, needs of our users. We conduct usability tests with our prototypes, uh, observing how users interact with the app and identifying areas that need improvement. And by incorporating user feedback, we can iterate and refine our design and ensure user-friendly and intuitive experience while solving for the finite problem. After iterating the needed amount of times, we move on to the development and implementation of our solution. Uh, let's shift our focus to the importance of using the right visualization for our data. Here we have uh, the Minard map, and it serves as a prime example of how complex information can be effectively communicated through a well-designed and visually engaging representation. Uh, this graph presents the um, Napoleon's campaign to Moscow. Here we can see the ge geographic path taken and the width of the line shows the size of the army. And the brown line uh, represents the movement towards Russia and the black line uh, corresponds to the surviving army during the retreat. Uh, there are also the, um, uh, the, down below, we can see the climatic conditions in certain points of time. And this, this visualization is renowned for its ability to convey the immense scale of the campaign, the devastating impact of the harsh winter and the tragic loss of life suffered by the French army. And moving on to another example that is more related to healthcare, we can see the rose diagram created by Florence Nightingale. It illustrates the causes of mortality in the military hospital during the Crimean War. Um, its circle is divided in 12 sectors, which represent each month and the um, different colors represent different causes for death. And the, um, the area is proportional to the amounts of uh, death attributed to that cause. So um, this graph challenged the prevailing beliefs and practices of the time, which attributed uh, death primarily to wounds and battle injuries. Through her graph, she emphasized the importance of preventive measures and the need for systematic improvements in healthcare, infrastructure, and hygiene. So now here we have some examples of more common used 
uh, graphs. And I just wanted to emphasize uh, that using the right visualization techniques uh, is essential for effectively, effectively communicating insights and facilitating data-driven decision-making. And by choosing appropriate visualizations, we can enhance understanding, engage users, and avoid misinterpretation and bias. So now I'm going to show you the actual app we developed. Here we have the main menu where we can see the different menus we created with a small a description for each one. You can also click here, for example, and go straight to that menu. But I'm going to start from the top. Uh, here we have the operating room report, um, in which you can see the use of super operating rooms. In blue, we can see the percentage of hours of work compared to the enabled hours. And in green, we can see the percentage of scheduled hours compared to the enabled um, hours. And also here you can see that the difference between the two um, bars represent the amount of suspensions. Uh, here in the stats that are to the right, um, we can um, identify problems. For example, here we can identify that there are problems with the amount of hours that are getting scheduled. And also there are problems with the amount of suspensions of the operations. Then we have uh, the suspension analysis, first by cost. Uh, in this graph, we can see for each month, um, the percentage of, um, of suspensions attributed to each cost. Here we can see that in general, uh, the patient and the surgical equipment costs are the most common and something that is also stated here. Then we have the breakdown of reasons for suspension surgery of surgeries in the Sankey chart, uh, where we can see the specific reasons for suspensions and to which category each one belongs. Then we have these two Pareto charts of causes uh, that shows uh, one for patients from 15 years and over and the other one for all ages. We can see that both are pretty much the same. And as I said before, patient and surgical equipment are the most common reasons for suspensions. And here we have another part of the chart, but for the specific reasons of suspension. Uh, so here we can see the surgical table extension, acute pathology, the patients does not shut up, and COVID-19 health emergency are the main reasons why the operations are getting suspended. Then we have the suspension by specialty and also by type of surgery. Uh, in this first pie chart, uh, we can see that major surgeries are the ones that are getting uh, the higher amount of suspensions. And here we can see that a general surgery and also traumatology are the specialties that get the most suspended. And then we have here the number of suspensions by specialty and also by type, by type of surgery. So here, we, for example, for general surgery, we can see that uh, there were 181 uh, suspended operations in major surgery uh, the last year. And then this menu is pretty similar to uh, the operating room report. Here we can see the number of scheduled quotas and the number of quotas used. But in this case, we can see that there are more quotas used than the number of uh, the scheduled ones. Uh, that, that is something that we can see here. Two. And lastly, we have the days of pre-surgical stay menu. In blue, we can see the total days of pre-surgical stay. Um, in green, the number of patients operated. And in blue, we can see the every day of stay per patients. So um, here to the right, um, we can see the general stats for the whole year. And 
the graph shows them divided by month. And also you can choose here uh, which specialty you want to see the data of. And also you can choose all of them. And lastly, we have um, this graph that is pretty similar to the other one, but in this case, they are separated by surgeries. Oh, so, um, sorry, <laughs> by specialty, by specialty. So uh, here you can compare the different specialties for the month you choose and also uh, for the whole year. And thank you. Thank you so much for listening. And we're happy to answer any questions you have. So I'll start out by saying that is beautiful work. The, the, uh, the artistry, the aesthetics are beautiful. The design is lovely. So thank you. It's incredibly impressive. The, I'm curious to know, are you thinking about developing dashboards that are public facing and internal facing? So are, are you trying to share hospital information um, again to the world or is your audience people who work within the hospital? Um. <laughs> uh. Well, um, actually, this development uh, is in is it in, uh, in how um, uh, uh, this this dashboard in this moment is a is a idea for a startup. So the data, uh, the the tools. Uh, uh, is is our for for this we have been using public information in order to prototype but this is the idea is to actually use them for uh, directly working with uh, hospitals and so on how, how concerned i don't know i've never been to chile how, how concerned are you about needing to do english spanish Portuguese is, uh, are you concerned about trying to do shiny multilingual? Um, what do you mean <laughs> that? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. In, in fact, this dashboard is multilingual uh, in Spanish or English. For this okay. moment is, is it up in English for the the old dashboard uh, is in Spanish. Cool, it's very impressive. I've tried to do shiny in Spanish and English. Um, it's a lot of work, so I'm very very impressed. Um, I'm looking for questions. Um, you have a lot of positive feedback. Um, there's a question about, can you export reports? So can you produce PDFs or can you go off of the web? Uh, for the moment, um, the dashboard is not available for report or R markdown or quarto documents. Okay. I think that's it. I don't see any other questions. Um, so again, I'll, I'll just say, this is beautiful work. Please continue. Um, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'm very, very impressed. This is incredibly hard work. And thank you for sharing. You'll see it in the thank chat. You. Thank you. So, bueno, gracias a todos en español y thank you all for this session. Thank you for presenting. Uh, 